Hey guys, City Walk, City Wall here in partnership with Paradox Interactive and the City Skylines official YouTube channel. And I'm here to bring you the final part of a four part tutorial series on asset creation for City Skylines. So if you missed the first three, I would recommend going back and catching up real quick. In this tutorial, we're gonna take all these building pieces that we've modeled and textured, construct a building out of them and import that into the game. So first thing here in the layout window and in object mode here in Blender, I'm going to click on the active tool and workspace setting tab, open up options and check origins. This is going to allow us to rotate the origin point of our overall main model here because City Skylines is oriented differently than Blender. In cities, Y, the green one needs to be facing upwards and Z, the blue one needs to be facing forward. So we can just rotate this. Now I'm going to go into edit mode. I'm going to take each piece of the model and make sure snapping is on, move it to the origin, hit P and then selection to separate the selection into a new object. Rename the object and place it in the pieces folder and then turn it off. So by the end, we've got all these pieces as their own individual object. Next thing, City Skylines and most video games need an LOD version of the model. This stands for Load on Distance. It's like a low quality version of the exact same model. Fewer tries, smaller texture. It's what gives you smooth FPS when you're looking at the entire city, tons and tons of assets all at once. But it's also what creates uh, that horrible snapping when you're zooming in or out of an asset when uh, the asset has bad LODs or none at all, it has game generated LODs. So a good LOD is important not only for performance, but also visually as you move the camera around, because when you zoom out, you're looking only at LODs, not the original model anymore. So I'm gonna start here with the stairs, duplicate the object, call it the same thing, but with underscore LOD at the end. I'm gonna go into edit mode and then just start deleting faces or dissolving edges by hitting X until I've got this down to as few tries as possible. And you can see the try count down at the bottom right corner. The goal here is to get rid of anything that you wouldn't notice if you were looking at this from a distance, anything on the underside, most, if not all of the details, but the goal is to keep all the most important surfaces intact, all of the ones that you would definitely notice at a distance if they were to disappear or change. It's okay if the pieces don't connect or if there's holes in them because at a distance you won't really notice. So I'm just gonna go through each and every one of these pieces and create an LOD for each one. Now, there's a lot of ways to make LODs. Ronix69 has a really good video on it, but this is the method that I prefer personally. So now that that's done, here's the really fun part, arranging the building. So what I'm gonna do is in object mode, just start copying and pasting pairs of pieces, both the LOD and the main versions together, moving them together, rotating them together. So at the end, we have both an LOD building and the main building made out of tons of little pieces sitting on top of each other. We can then separate out the layers, put them into their respective folder and hit Command J to join them down into just two objects, the main model and the LOD model. Last thing is just to make sure that the origin points are still correct, and then we're done with everything on the modeling and texturing side, and we can begin exporting it and bringing it into cities. So if we select our main model, go up to the top and hit export FBX, we'll be able to export this in the format that we can import into the game. So we'll make sure that we've got selected objects checked on the right, and the name of this is gonna be the base name for our asset. Everything else we export will be the exact same name of this, but with an underscore and different letters afterwards. So we can export this and then click on the LOD model, export that, and this time put underscore LOD at the end. Then in Photoshop, let's export our diffuse texture twice. The first time at full size, 1024 by 1024, and we'll add an underscore D at the end of the file name for diffuse. And the second time at a much smaller resolution, I'm gonna do 128 by 128. And remember, this still has to be a power of two for the dimension size. And for this, I'm gonna put underscore LOD underscore D at the end of the file name, signifying that this is the LOD model's tiny, tiny, very FPS friendly diffuse texture. So then we'll just go through all the other textures, same thing, exporting them twice, same resolutions as before, one time with underscore S for specular, underscore LOD S for the specular LOD. And it's always just gonna be the first letter of the texture name that you're using. So N for normal, A for alpha, I for illumination, C for color, and uh, lowercase letters for all of it. 
So at the end in our textures folder, we have 12 textures, six full res ones and six LOD versions. And in our FBX folder, we have our two models exported out. So now we need to copy all 14 of these files into our import folder and then open up Steam. Now, before I open up the game, there's a couple of things I wanna to subscribe to on the workshop. If you're using the no workshop method to clear out all mods and assets, you'll need to save these files locally. Instructions on how to do that can be found on ronix 69s website, cslmodding.info, but otherwise you can just subscribe to these mods and assets, uh, no problem. So first, I want this building to have a satellite dish on the roof. So I'm gonna subscribe to this pack of satellite dishes so that we can use one of them in the asset editor. And in order to place it properly, I'm also gonna to need to subscribe to move it and its dependencies, which are all compatible with the asset editor. In game, I'll head over to the asset editor, create a new asset a building, and I'm gonna choose a park just because that's how I want personally this building to function and so I'm gonna use it. I, I wanna place it down on a path using the Parkify mod, but basically picking different templates to start uh, your asset here will give you different options for how to set up your asset. Your asset will behave differently depending on which template you use. So then I'll just choose my FBX here from the list on the left. For scale, you always wanna use 100 if you're exporting out of Blender because that's just the Blender to City Skylines conversion size, like 100 to one. And here we go, it's in the game. You can see there's holes in the stairs. It looks reflective, it looks bumpy. The windows look like glass, they light up at night and you can zoom way out and the LOD looks okay as well. So now I'm just gonna play with the settings in the box on the bottom right, resize the dimensions. I don't want any color variations or for it to flatten the terrain. So I'm gonna mess with also the floor heights so that this fake floor inside the window is a bit lower. And then I'm also gonna place down a door marker, which says this is where citizens can enter and exit the building. Some satellite dishes on the top, a little vanilla antenna thing on the roof, as well as a light. And then I'm gonna save it. So now's the fun part. We're here in game in Skylines Invicta and I've made this little scene for the asset and he looks great. I just need to take some screenshots now for the thumbnail and for the workshop page. Some that would be good in widescreen format for the images on the workshop page and some that would be good as a square thumbnail. So I'll just do that and then I'll quit the game and load back in again without any mods or assets and load up the asset again in the asset editor. Meanwhile, we can work on the thumbnail for this. It should be square, no larger than 400 by 400 pixels, have some clear text saying what the asset is, a clear and impressive picture of the asset, and I'll save this in the thumbnails folder that we made way back in episode one. Then, back in game, if I load up the asset and immediately just resave it, what I can do is click on this little folder icon at the bottom right, and this will open up a folder outside of the game in Finder Explorer with a few files in it uh, relating to the thumbnail. So what we can do is move our thumbnail into this folder, copy the name of the thumbnail that was already there, asset underscore thumb, delete that file, and then rename our thumbnail asset underscore thumb. So this will make City Skylines show this thumbnail when we're looking for the asset in game. And you can also change the tooltip image, uh, but I'm not gonna do that. And then I'm going to rename the asset, but not the file name so that it comes up as a nice name when I'm in game. I'll add a description, which will help us find the asset using the find it mod. Anything you write here will come up when you search in that mod and you can add some extra search terms basically. So then I'll hit save. Now we can quit and go back to the main menu, open up the content manager and under assets, we should see our new asset. If we hit share, a uh, window will pop up, which has yet another little folder icon. So if we click this, we can see a folder and an image. Inside the folder is our .crp file, which we can add additional CRP files into this folder if we want to uh, make a pack of assets released to the workshop as opposed to just a single asset. And for the thumbnail, I'm gonna do the same thing as before. Bring my thumbnail into this folder, delete the image and rename my thumbnail, preview image exactly the same as what the other image was named before. And you can see our thumbnail update in game as we do this. It looks a little squished, but that's totally normal. That's how it's supposed to be. So then we can hit publish and our asset is on the workshop. 
Now that it's on the workshop, what we can do is go into our assets folder in City Skylines and move this local version of our asset out of here and into our own CRPs folder that we made in the first asset creation tutorial for safekeeping. You don't wanna keep your local asset in the assets folder for the game to actually load up because you really don't wanna have both the local version and the workshop version at the same time. That's uh, gonna cause problems. So the last thing to do is make the workshop page for this asset. I'll start off by changing the workshop page title and then start working on a description. This works just like HTML, you can make headers and bold text and little charts and add images and hyperlinks and all sorts of stuff. There's a whole page on the Steam community website that gives you uh, all the guidelines for this. And in general, the more detailed and thorough and well presented this description is, the better your asset is going to do on the workshop. No one wants to download an asset that has no information about it on the page. So it's super important here, it really just common courtesy is to list the technical information about your asset so that people know when they're downloading it how intensive it's going to be on their machine when it's in game. So I'm going to list out the main texture size as well as the types, the LOD texture size and types, and also the number of tries that the main model and LOD model have. And you can find this info if you go back into Blender, click on the asset, go into the edit mode, and look at the very bottom right of the screen, it tells you how many tries your model has. So I'm just gonna add some hyperlinks and then I can save this description and go back to the asset page and we can see that it updated there. Next, I'm going to add a required item, those satellites. I'll add a link to my YouTube channel. And then the last thing, I'm just going to add some images. So if I make a few real quick in Photoshop, these should be no larger than 720p and should give a few different angles of your asset, maybe some information about it as well. So we'll hit save. And that's it, we're done. We've started from absolutely nothing and step-by-step step gone through how to make an asset for City Skylines. Last thing to do is to subscribe to your own asset. Now you have to remember there are different types of assets uh, and each one is a bit different. Vehicles, uh, you don't really make them in the exact same way as you would a building, which also isn't you know the exact same way that you would make a prop but all the information you could ever need about uh, making assets can be found on Ronix 69s website, cslmodding.info. There's tons of rules and guidelines and cool tricks and ways to make glass and rotating props and anything you could ever imagine. So I hope these tutorials really inspired you and taught you something and are useful for you as you create your very first asset. That's it from me, City Walk, City Wall, and make sure to subscribe to my channel if you want to see this asset in action, in game, and of course, to the City Skylines YouTube channel as well.